This introductory video uh, addresses the first law of thermodynamics and in particular how uh, we can turn that into a rate equation that we can use uh, in heat transfer problems. So the first law of thermodynamics is a statement of the conservation of energy, one of those fundamental principles of the universe. And uh, that uh, conservation of energy says basically that you can't create energy or destroy energy so if we define a system, um, the change in energy of that system is going to be whatever goes into that system minus whatever comes out of it. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> this guy uh, is creating some energy. He's non-physical. Uh, so the units of this are in the units of energy in joules. Uh, but in heat transfer, generally, we want to talk about rate equations. We're going to talk about how things change with time. So we want to change the first law into a rate equation. And we do that with little dots. Uh, put a little dot above all these. And those dots indicate a derivative with respect to time. So you can imagine that all of these are going to be d, dt terms. Uh, so we can look at the change of energy of what's coming in. Uh, and what's going out, and that's going to give us the instantaneous um, rate of change of the energy in, um, uh, in that system. So each dotted term represents a rate of change over time. So that's telling us how much energy per unit time is coming into the system, how much energy per unit time is going out, and then this term is uh, the energy of this, the change in the energy of the system uh, per unit time. And the units here are no longer in energy. They're not in joules, but they're in watts, uh, joules per second. So all we've done is taken the first law of thermodynamics, one of those key principles, and turned it into a rate equation that tells us how things are changing over time, which is the fundamental concern of heat transfer. All right, in order to use the first law, we have to think about what a system is and how we define that. So we de define a boundary, and then we call whatever is inside that boundary a system. Now that can be anything, anything that has some kind of mass or volume um, that, uh, that we can talk about as a separated space. Um, it's gonna change how we think about a problem based on how we set up that boundary. So we want to be careful how to do that to try and make sure that we can determine when something is crossing a boundary or not. Uh, and once we successfully do that, we call this a control volume. Uh, so we're kind of thinking about everything in this system is inside, everything else is outside. And we can make that volume whatever size or shape we want, and we usually want to do it in a way that makes it convenient for us uh, to solve the problem. One special case uh, is when we create a really narrow control volume called a control surface and we make that infinitesimally small uh, and the reason we do that is as we shrink it down and down into an infinitesimal surface it doesn't have any volume uh, and so if it doesn't have any volume or if it has infinitesimal volume uh, the amount of energy that it has is going to be very very small uh, and so we can basically treat that as whatever goes in has to come out. Um, and so here's, you know, if we had a problem with a solid, with a fluid interface, anything that went through the solid as conduction, any thermal energy that went through the solid would have to leave that surface uh, through convection or radiation or uh, whatever process. Whatever flows must flow out. 